Hi everyone, my name is Braden, and I'm here to discuss neutral ground bonding with EG4 inverters. People using our inverters are building many different kinds of systems and trying to use the best neutral ground bond practices. There's a lot of confusion around this issue as the rules and considerations change with different scenarios. Here, we are illustrating the best way to achieve code compliance in the most common use cases that we've seen. The NEC states in Article 250.30A1 that you'll need a single system bonding jumper when using a separately derived system source. In an off-grid only situation, your output panel should have a bond jumper installed, which is common in all homes connected to the grid. In this case, the inverter is basically acting as the grid. Main output panels in an off-grid scenario require a main breaker to also conform with the NEC means of disconnect. For grid-connected systems, you'll rely on the existing neutral bond in your home and will not bond the output panel on your inverter. A main breaker style output panel is not required in this case, but we do recommend it. And in mobile applications, you'll face unique challenges because they are forced to operate essentially in both of the previous modes at different times. Because of this, the bonding relay was built into the inverters and connected with an internal screw. Most mobile applications will use one inverter, but a two inverter system will result in multiple bonds close together. And while not perfectly aligned with building code, the ungrounded alternative is undesirable. Here, we'll draw out and explain all of these scenarios electrically. Here we have a typical standalone system where we don't use a grid source or have any service panel for the AC input side. Since you always want your inverter output to have a disconnect source, and in most standalone cases you'll have more than one inverter anyway, your bond will need to be at your main breaker style output panel. While you could substitute a bonding screw in this case as a jumper in the disconnection means, it is not compliant if you have more than one inverter in your system like most of our customers tend to do. Any generator connected to your inverter, excluding the use of a charge verter, we need to either have no bond or use a three-pole transfer switch to keep a continuous neutral. All inverters shipped since November of 2022 have the bond screw removed to make this easy, so if your unit has the original black terminals, then you will likely need to remove the bonding screw inside. Next, we have a system that is using the grid as a backup source of power. The inverter would supply power whenever it could and transfer to the grid for occasional support automatically. Normally, your inverter is passing through the utility neutral and the bond from your main panel is passed alongside, but when the grid goes down, the inverter's built-in neutral relay would disconnect the utility's neutral to create its own. This is where the default internal bond screw would normally be applicable to create a bond since you will no longer have access to the grids. The concern with this arises when you're operating in inverter mode with multiple inverters, as you'll now have two or more bonds on the same ground, which could cause objectionable current. This would be in violation of NEC 250.6, so the answer would seem to be just to take out the screw entirely, but then you'd have an unbonded system when operating in inverter mode. EG4 has removed this bond screw and configured the inverter's relay using software to always pass through the neutral to match U.S. industry standards for stationary systems. You will thus always have the grid's neutral bond pass through and have the bond on the output panel as well. This applies to units shipped after February of 2023 and beyond, as well as any firmware update with the version 61.13 or later on the 6000 watt unit or 79.63 on the 6500 watt unit. If your inverters are installed with a grid connection, we recommend ensuring that you have the latest firmware and that you have no ground bonds on the output side of the inverter. Now we're looking at a mobile build, like a typical RV or fifth wheel, that may occasionally connect a short power to charge the system and run larger loads. In this instance, you're not hardwired into the grid, and you'll need the relay to adjust the bonding for when you're operating on shore power or standalone. Since this is a slightly less common use case for our inverters, we decided it was best to have it run on a relayless firmware, but we have a separate firmware that keeps this relay function active. To use it, all you'll need to do is ensure that you have the bonding screw, which is an M2.5 by 10 millimeter, mounted like so. And install our mobile firmware available at eg4electronics.com downloads. Since our units are now shipping without the bond screw, we have made the screw available at one of our links below. We hope this video is helpful in educating on the ground bond situation. As always, we recommend consulting your inspecting body as well as a licensed professional to make sure that your system is safe and up to code before you proceed. I'm Braden with EG4 Electronics and thank you for watching.